and welcome to the next episode of the Dad Bod Strong Podcast. Uh, my name is Tim, and uh, I'm here for another exciting episode to hopefully share with everybody. Uh, I'm taking it, if you're listening to this podcast, you've either found me on Libsyn or you found me on iTunes. Uh, if you would, please uh, you know, rate me on iTunes and uh, also drop me a comment. I greatly appreciate it. Also, too, you can check out my Instagram uh, page. My Instagram page is Dad Bod Strong Podcast, or you can check my uh, my personal feed at Dad underscore Strong underscore or sorry, Dad underscore Bod underscore Strong. And uh, from there, you can kind of see the different things that I've been able to do, uh, what I'm doing, and how I'm doing it. Uh, I have. Uh, Definitely made some modifications, uh, started some new habits. Uh, definitely the macro counting is one of those you know trendy new habits, but but also too, uh, uh, been embarking on a lot of ROM wads as of late. Uh, those ROM wads, uh, I think they've made me a tad flexible, uh, a little bit better. I've noticed that my flexibility has definitely improved quite a bit. Uh, definitely one of those things that helped on uh, the CrossFit Open 19.1. Uh, so I'm definitely, uh, you know, with all those wall balls and uh, and that rowing, I think that the uh, the um, flexibility that I've gained through the uh, ROM wads has definitely helped with uh, those, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, the, the flexibility I've gained through those ROM wads has definitely helped on those wall balls. So uh Moved better than I thought, but definitely cover that a little bit today. So, uh, you know, talking about this podcast, this podcast is, you know, definitely to help me document my struggles, uh, struggles in life, uh, personal struggles in both health and fitness, and, you know, the different strategies that, that I'm definitely trying to employ to address them. Uh, over 20 years, I've definitely struggled with a lot of you know, health and fitness and weight, probably mostly weight than anything else. Uh, over 20 years, I, uh, I've definitely, you know, was an overweight teenager, college student, uh, tipping the scales at about 260, 265 pounds. Uh, <clears throat> one of those things, not my proudest moment, to be honest with you. Uh, lost a considerable amount of weight, lost about 100 pounds, uh, almost unrecognizable to my family, but uh, slowly but surely over the last 20 years, those things have kind of came back. Uh, and actually, I'll probably say 15 years because my son's almost 15 and I was probably at my lowest when he was first born. Uh, but modern conveniences and life gets in the way. Uh, kids, definitely kid activities, uh, you know, going from one thing to the next, uh, being busy and, you know, probably not being nearly as committed as what I once was. So definitely working hard on that, trying to, you know, bring myself or build myself back up. You know, I've definitely recognized that I needed a change. And so I've learned quite a bit about myself really over the course of the last 20 years, but really even this last six weeks. Uh, this podcast is not about, you know, starting a new fitness craze. Uh, you know, I don't have anything to sell anybody. I, I think that uh, I, I saw something the other day on, I want to say it was on a, the Squat University. He posted something in regards to uh, you should really listen to your trainers that you work with day in and day out. Not necessarily somebody that's trying to sell you something on Instagram or even on like a podcast like mine. You can definitely use those resources as something to maybe help you get better, but I don't have anything new and trendy. Um, you know, what I've seen is calories in, calories out. And if you have an excess of calories, then you're going to put weight on. But if you make it, if you have a deficit, you're going to lose some weight. Uh, working hard in the gym, you know, a lot of what we do is about hard work. And I think what we forget about is the hard work. Uh, it's, yeah, I keep using the word hard, but the reason why it's difficult to lose weight is because it is hard. It takes a level of commitment that, you know, sometimes we don't have. And sometimes I will be honest, I don't have. But I try to remain as committed as I possibly can. Uh, as I mentioned, this is about my experiences being an average guy, trying to lose, lose weight 
raise kids and try to be healthier while raising my children and being a good family man. So with that being said, today is Sunday. And for me, Sunday Sundays are kind of bittersweet. And the reason why I say they can be bittersweet is not because I got not because I'm going to work the next day. Uh, I do like Sundays. I like going to open gym. I like talking with people. But today is weigh in day. Today is weigh in day and picture day. And uh, you know, picture day is something I loathed at the beginning, uh, but have seen some improvements in the scale over time. And so my lovely wife definitely helps with picture day. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do it without her. Uh, we have we also video the measurements. Uh, so I'm sure that over the course of time, if I start putting some of those things on YouTube, you can probably get a good laugh. Uh, there, there are definitely a couple things that uh, I, I've noticed about myself on these uh, weigh-in days. And as we video it, uh, seeing the transformation maybe is probably a good way. Now, sometimes our measurements are not always the the spot on, but if we can see a change, that's great. Uh, And so knowing that today is weigh-in day and measurement day and the dreaded picture day, uh, today's weigh-in total was 21.6. Actually, I think it was 21 or 221 pounds uh, 0. 0.6. So 221.6. Uh, yesterday I was at 220.4. Uh, so maybe have a little bit of inflammation from yesterday's workout, or maybe uh, I didn't work out nearly as hard. But unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, went to Red Robin last night and uh, enjoyed a hamburger, or cheeseburger, and some of the steak fries. So not sure if that had anything to you know do with today's weigh-in. Uh, I probably should have just stuck to my protein bars uh, like I normally do in the evenings just to avoid those extra calories. Uh, in addition to Sundays being weigh-in day, it's also meal prep day. So when I first began the podcast, uh, de- brewed a pot of coffee, signed the kids their chores, chicken was placed in the instant pot. I think I just heard the timer go off. And uh, trying to sit down for 30 minutes to be able to record this podcast. You know, the funny thing is the life of an amateur podcaster. I've been trying to record this podcast almost all day. It is now, as I see on my computer screen, it is 5.11. And uh, I'm about 10 minutes into this podcast. So I started at roughly about five o'clock, but I've been trying to do it all day. The life of an amateur podcaster is trying to find time when nobody's in the office. I can sit here quietly and I can talk into the microphone and not have to worry about the goofy faces that I make or having to worry about maybe other people listening and critiquing me as I do this podcast. Uh, kids are upstairs. I have my son out weed eating. Uh, you know, him being 15, definitely helpful. Uh, takes the burden off of me a little bit. Uh, and then my wife is uh, tending to a couple of things that she's working on. And my daughter, well, I think she's probably prepping for another episode of Fearless Emma Takes on the World, or like most kids nowadays, is on YouTube watching videos on how to make slime. But with that being said, we got 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes to talk. I should probably move on. And we're at about nine minutes in and I really haven't gotten to any, any hardcore content. Uh, what I'd like to do today is review just a couple things. I had a couple things in mind, but I felt that I really needed to shift gears today because there's different, different things that I'd like to talk about. And I've got this podcast I can record. <clears throat> all sorts of different episodes to, to talk about those sorts of things. But over time, we'll, we'll get there. Um, I, I talked last year in one of my podcasts, or it'd probably be one of the podcasts coming up in regards to the definition of dad bod, and uh, maybe disagree a little bit with that definition. So as this podcast continues to churn along, I'll talk a little bit about that, and uh, I'll give you my definition of what dad bod is. 
However, for this podcast, what I like to do is I'd like to really review week one of the CrossFit Open, uh, 19.1. I, uh, it, it, the, the week is starting to wind to an end. Uh, we had a you know, fun-filled week at CrossFit Oakdale. Uh, this week's theme was the Big Lebowski, and uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of Big Lebowski t-shirts and uh, didn't really have any memes to put out there, but hopefully during week three, which is uh, uh, Team Salute the Glutes, uh, the team that I am a part of, hopefully that I can engage a little bit more as it relates back to the memes. So talking about CrossFit, oh, talking about the CrossFit Open, week one, workout 19.1. It was a 15-minute AMRAP, 19 wall balls, and a 19-calorie row. For me, not necessarily the best person on wall balls, but for the row, definitely within my wheelhouse. And I can I can throw the ball up in the air 19 times. It's not, not a number that uh, would make it too terribly difficult for me. So yesterday, I completed the workout. I really tried to focus early on on setting my pace, uh, my pace, and not anybody else's. I tried to not focus so much on the people around me. Uh, really trying to listen to my body. How are my knees feeling that day? How are my hips feeling? How my back, my heart, my lungs, all those things. Uh, <clears throat> as I, you know, focused on those things, uh, I kind of tried to put blinders on because. You're working next to people that are, you know, definitely pushing as hard as they possibly can. And not that I didn't want to worry about where they were at, because like most CrossFit things, it is competition. You're trying to be better than the next person. However, I wanted to focus on me. Uh, I wanted to focus on what I could do to, you know, get a little bit better, a little bit healthier. I really tried to focus on being smooth the whole time. I didn't want to uh, start and start really hard <clears throat> and then not be able to hold on for the 15 minutes. And as I said, I, I'd like to have fun. I like to have fun in workouts. Now, granted, this wasn't a workout that I could joke around in too terribly much. Uh, definitely... <laughs> had uh, maybe some difficulty breathing, especially in those later rounds. Uh, but I really think that working out should be a time to relax, blow off steam, and have some fun. For me, that's kind of my stress relief in life. I find it, it you know, really kind of relaxing to go in and kind of free my mind a little bit as I'm working out. I, I don't necessarily black out because I can still feel, you know, how hard I'm working. And some days I think that I should work a little less hard than I normally do. But, uh, you know, my wife would probably tell you that too, because there, there, I have some underlying things that maybe I shouldn't work, you know, I shouldn't push myself nearly as hard as I do. But, uh, I think that since I'm still not 40 yet, I think I have that ability to kind of push myself, uh, a little bit further than maybe what I would like. But I had an opportunity to talk with other people about their experiences, and it, it shows how, what challenges they face during the Open. And, and this goes for me, too, because I can, I don't want to say simple, sympathize, but I, their thoughts are similar to my thoughts a lot of times when it comes to uh, CrossFit workouts and, and what we do. I mean, a lot of times what we find us, ourselves doing is we compare ourselves against others. And I am extremely guilty of this as well. And I'm sure that uh, any members of the CrossFit Oakdale community could probably chime in because a lot of times I may joke that I have a friend of mine that, that I always say it's his name plus one uh, because I'm always trying to maybe better myself. Now, granted, he has maybe a, a, a better ability, maybe a better gift, uh, in certain areas of athletic performance. He, he probably runs a little bit faster than I do. Uh, he's got definitely longer legs and I know he can bench press a lot more than I can. And I mean a lot, probably, uh, 50 to 60 pounds more on a PR. So on those lower weights, I'm always doing, if he doesn't 195, I try to do 195 and a half 
just so that way that day I can maybe be a little bit better. But so, you know, with that being said, I, yeah, I do compare myself. Uh, now, should I be comparing myself? Not necessarily. I, I, you know, for me and I, I hope for him as well. Uh, it's a joke, uh, that we can kind of, you know, kid around with and have a good time with. Uh, but, but I think we all, if, if you're a CrossFitter, you compare yourself with, compare yourself to others. And, and I think that as we compare ourselves to others, we always think that maybe we should do just a little bit better. Uh, you know, CrossFit is about competing, but it's one of those things that we see other people's scores and then we start to question things. Uh, maybe they, maybe they don't quite know how to count is maybe some of the things that we think about. Maybe they skipped a couple of reps. Maybe they didn't do it how they were supposed to do it. Uh, and then because we feel that, that they've bested us in some, some fashion, especially in the CrossFit open workouts, we feel compelled that we have to do that workout again. Um, so knowing that we, we, we have this, you know, anticipation before we do the workout, this anxiety builds from within, we get all this anxiety, we, we start like today or yesterday when we were doing the workout, you go through those wall balls and those wall balls go so extremely fast, those first 19, then we hop on the rower and then we're pulling as hard as we can. We're trying to hit a 2200 calorie row, we're trying to almost break the, the monitor, we're trying to see how hard we can, we can, you can pull on that thing. And then round two, we're so gassed, we can barely hold on to the rower. I think that that nervous anticipation, that anxiety, really that adrenaline, we burn up so fast. And, you know, my philosophy for the CrossFit Open Games is not necessarily the same as others. However, I'm a one and done kind of guy. I feel that I give every ounce of energy that I possibly have on that day to complete that workout. Not to say that I couldn't do better on another day. I could probably maybe do better depending on, you know, especially for if it's a squatting workout. I might be able to do a little bit better if my hips are not nearly as, uh, you know, tight. Uh, maybe maybe stretch out my uh, IT bands, my glutes, and those sorts of things to be able to help. Uh, I might be able to do better this the next time around. Uh, but I think that there's probably other things I could be doing. Uh, instead of redoing a workout that I just did maybe two days ago. Uh, I could be working on some deficiencies. Uh, for me today, uh, I was working with uh, my, uh, my partner for the Festivus Games that are coming up in April, and that gave us an opportunity to maybe see where we need to maybe synchronize a couple different things, especially on the synchronized uh, DT workout that we have to do. And a little bit tougher than probably what I even thought it was going to be. So this, you know, instead of doing the workout again today, I really tried to focus on that. If I didn't do that, today was actually going to be an active recovery day. I was going to focus more on, you know, maybe a long... Uh, aerobic workout and something a little low intensity, a couple 400 meter runs, maybe even some rowing, some, some work on the bike, but it was definitely going to be something that I could do to work on a deficiency that maybe I had. So working on the, the Festivus games definitely, you know, provided a break, much need a break that I hadn't, uh, that I probably needed today, not necessarily focusing. Now, granted, uh, my my fellow uh, fellow dad uh, uh, that I typically compete with, he was working out right behind me uh, doing the workout today, and I kept joking around with him, saying, "If he if he beats me today, I'm gonna have to try to redo this workout today." There was probably no way in I maybe in my mind I probably could have done it, but. Uh, I have a little bit of fatigue in my in my core today, in my glutes, my hamstrings. So I really don't think that today doing that workout again would have been in my best interest. I probably, I think to me, I would have been extremely disappointed if I redid that workout and I, I earned, let's say, 25 reps less than what I got today. Uh, would have been one of those really defeating things. And so as I talk about that, if really the only incentive is to best another, 
And, you know, because you didn't think that you did as good as you possibly could on that day, I think we're doing it for the wrong reasons. Uh, I think you need to find the right reasons to, to redo the workout. If the right reason is because you felt that you maybe didn't score nearly as high as what you thought you could, I think that's great. I, I think that that's, uh, yeah, absolutely. But if you're, what you're doing is you're comparing with others because you feel that maybe you're superior to them, maybe not. I think that if that's the case, some days, some days people are perform maybe just a little bit better than you. I think the question, uh, you know, most people should ask, and this is what I ask is, and just kind of what I indicated, what happens if I lose reps or time, or I don't beat the person that I'm comparing myself to, you know, could be very disappointing, could be one of those things that may lead to a little bit of grief. And I think in CrossFit, we can, especially during the open, we can apply the five steps or stages of grief to most of our CrossFit workouts. The first one being denial. And as I talk about denial, I'm sure many of us, and I'm I'm included, thinking there is no way that person could have beat me. They must have cheated. There is absolutely no way they could have bested me because I am amazing and I am God's gift to CrossFit. Uh, I've, I've thought this from time to time that there is no way X person could have beat me because of Y. Because maybe I had a little bit, I felt my fitness level was a little bit higher than theirs. So denial being step one. I think then we 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 slip into anger because well now we're denying the the ability that they can beat us so now we're moving to anger and we're angry that we have spent all this time in the gym and they've maybe spent half the time in the gym and and they still beat us then we and we now we're starting to feel a little bit inferior and then we shift into bargaining man God if you I, I promise I promise I'll come to the gym more often. I'll be. I'll do tw- two a days if you just let me beat them in the next workout. Because God, I I really think that I I have the ability, and I should be beating them every day. But I'm going to bargain with you. I'm going to come into the gym every day. I'm going to work twice as hard than that I than I do right now. And then I think we slip into depression because now we realize that whoever it is, they might just be a little bit better than us. They may have a different skill level than what we do. So we're kind of getting, you know, a little bit more depressed because we have worked hard and uh, we're slipping. And, you know, for me, I'm getting a little bit older. I, I get depressed from time to time when I know that I once used to be able to do certain things. Like I used to be able to do muscle ups. Now, not so much. Now I hope as dad bod strong continues to lose some weight that I will be able to do a muscle up or two. Uh, tried some pull ups today as I worked with my partner as it related back to the Festivus games. And, and I don't know if that's because I lost some weight, but man, I was ripping off those pull ups. I felt pretty good. They weren't, <laughs> they definitely were not butterfly pull ups, but they were kipping pull ups. And I felt that I was going pretty fast and I was able to hold on for a little bit more than what I normally can. So I'm hoping that over time, that those sorts of things will get better as I, as I kind of get the, you know, the weight off my back and I stop wearing this, you know, heavy weight vest of all the, all the weight that I've accumulated over the last or over the course of the last, let's say 10 years, 15 years that it'll get easier and it, it, it will get easier. So I'm hoping that with that, I'll get a little bit smoother, get a little bit faster. I really think that as CrossFit athletes, though, that we need to be in stage five. We really need to be in that acceptance. And we really need to understand that sometimes people, other people, are going to be better than us. They may have a different skill set. Uh, recognizing it and being okay with it. It, it. That's one of those things. You have to recognize it and then try to be okay with it. It's like my meditation practice. Now, I'm not here to sell anything, but 
I will say that this is one thing that definitely helped me. It was a recommendation to me by another person, and I think that it will definitely help with help everybody as they try it. You know, do the take ten, but it's the Headspace app. The Headspace app has definitely been one of those things that has helped me recognize maybe things that I needed to change in my life. And I don't want to say change, but maybe develop in my life. Uh, I always thought that meditation was one of those things that uh, I had to sit and, and chant silently in my head on the floor in this double lotus position. Now, with my Ramwad, maybe someday I'll be able to get into that position. I was pretty close the other day. I'm hoping that I can get in that position. However, I do most of this in my recliner that I'm staring at right now. Uh, I do some of it as I go to bed. I do some of it when I'm sitting on the couch, maybe in my car as a, uh, as I get, you know, before I walk in the door to go to work. And I, I think for me, that's definitely helped. Uh, but as I talk about the meditation practice, as we talk about, you know, recognizing that maybe somebody is a little bit better not than us in certain areas and being okay with it. It's more about noting this thought in our mind that we're maybe upset with something and then having the ability to let it go, having the ability to let it go kind of helps. It's kind of a really kind of feels like it's a freedom of sorts. You kind of feel like things just kind of melt away and understanding uh, and understanding this and doing it are two totally separate things. Like I can tell you right now, as I I note that thought in my mind, and I'm just going to let it go, there are times that even doing meditation, and I'm on a 367-day streak of doing it every day, that I still struggle with that. And knowing that, I still need to work on that. That, you know, having that level of acceptance, knowing that I'm always... Life isn't perfect. And being able to focus less on the perfection of things, Uh, being able to focus on who I am in that day, uh, being able to focus on what I need to do. I think we can focus on, you know, perfection in other parts of our life. Uh, We need just really focus on being better versions of ourselves. And and that's really what, what I think about is how can I be a better version of myself? Meditation definitely included. And so... And I, as I talk about meditation, uh, being, you know, having the Headspace app, I get these notifications from time to time. And the notification that I got uh, or I received on Friday, perfection has no place in meditation. Simply rest at ease with whatever is present. Now, definitely a, a phrase, a statement that feels like it's got very profound effect on you. And as I thought about this, I, I really had to stop what I was doing. I took out my journal and I wrote what, what I felt about perfection. Because I think thinking about perfection, I think that we all think that everything in our life has to be perfect. For me, counting my macros, doing a workout, uh, trying to parent my children, all those different things, I really focus on it has to be perfect. My wife, on the other hand, she recognizes not everything's going to be perfect. There are different things that we can employ in our lives, in our daily lives, that, hey, maybe the house is going to be a little bit messy, but our kids are only going to be here for a couple more years. Let's focus less on maybe discipline and, and a little bit more on you know spending time with them while they're here. And sometimes I have a hard time letting go. I have a hard time noting that and letting it go. And seeking perfection is exhausting. And I will be the first one to tell you that because I seek perfection and try to do, you know, seek perfection in almost everything I possibly can, you know, relating to my kids and and how terrible they do the chores and how, how much that frustrates me. But I need to focus on not letting that bother me. I need, I need to try to focus on what drives that feeling. What drives that feeling? Well, I, I think part of it is I'm exhausted, and God, I don't want to do it. I want my kids to focus on doing it themselves. 
Uh, they may or may not. Uh, I want them to have the same pride in their in in their work that I do, but they don't always have that same you know same pride in different things. I, talking with my son today and on yard work, yeah, Dad, I'm going to get through it. I'm going to do what I can to try to get through this yard work, just so that way I can either get back on my Xbox. I can get back on my phone to watch YouTube, watching scooter videos, or maybe FaceTime with my girlfriend because you guys have put restrictions on my phone that I don't like. And so I'm going to try to do a half-assed job so I can get back to all those things. So uh, also, you know, trying to be perfect at the gym, trying to, you know, do what I can to uh, best another. You know, we talk we talked a little bit about that, but perfection is definitely always in the back of our mind. We need to kind of focus on how can we resolve the need for order in our life and that chaos? Being mindful helps, but many times it's difficult to escape that feeling. I have difficulty being able to escape that feeling from time to time. Like I said, you know, it, it, it builds up inside. It's hard to be able to find that outlet. Do I go immediately back to, you know, my meditation and, you know, sit in my chair, recline or throw some headphones in and try to, you know, relieve that, you know, anticipate or that, you know, feeling? No, I, I, don't, I don't think that you can stop what you're doing and throw some headphones in and try to try to relieve that tension that you have. But you know, shifting directions, I, I think that as I think I, shifting directions from perf- perfection, staying with perfection, but maybe thinking about other things in life is counting macros on my diet. Uh, I think that there are times that I'm missing X, Y, and Z and, and, and I, I can't, and I can't get my macro. So now I'm going to start melting down. I did that initially. I I've talked about that. I talked about that last episode of, shift, you know, being able to have my perfect portions of X, Y, and Z. And I need to have this meal for this time at this time. I need to have this meal at this time and, you know, so on and so forth. And, you know, focusing on meal prep and if meal prep doesn't go that the way I want it to, or, or if I don't have the the right things that I want to, then I'm just going to fail. And, and I think by focusing on that perfection, that's where we, we all, kind of fall off from time to time. We all fall off on our diets if if we think that perfection is the only way that we're going to be healthy and, you know, more fit. And I've kind of realized that really in the last 6 weeks that it doesn't always have to be perfect. We have to be consistent, yes, but it doesn't always have to be perfect. When we focus on perfection, we build all these grandiose thoughts in our head. And by, you know, putting all these thoughts in our head and when we're not perfect and we feel that we failed, we get depressed. And I think that by focusing on that and becoming depressed, we then quit, we give up. And, and I think that if we focus on less on perfection and more on imperfection and embrace that imperfection... And what we're trying to do to make better versions of us, I think that that's a little bit more freeing. I think that imperfection is what makes us all unique. And for me, I'm a talker. That's why I do this podcast. Other people, maybe not so much. They might be a blogger and might might be able to share their feelings elsewhere. Others may not, you know, want to share their feelings, but they have maybe other gifts that they can work on. And, but for me, it's it's talking. There are different things that, that I like to do. I kind of like to be out front. Uh, I like to definitely be a leader. I, I think that those are definitely qualities that uh, suit me or you know, feel like they're, they're kind of innate to me a little bit. But focusing less on perfection and more on imperfection and, and what makes us all unique, I think, is very important. Well... That's almost 35 minutes of me talking on this podcast. I didn't know if I was going to have enough to really even go 30 minutes. So today I'm kind of glad that that I was able to at least share my experiences. And like I said, this podcast is more about documenting my, my struggles, 
uh, sharing with you my experiences in health and fitness and things that have definitely helped me over time uh, better succeed. And I hope that maybe as you think about it, maybe making that incremental change and finding things that will work best for you, I think I hope that you can. I hope that you can find something that is a small step in the right direction. And I hope that you can stay with it and just be consistent. But remember, you don't have to be perfect. We're not perfect. It's about making those little changes and sticking with them. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of the Dad Bod Strong podcast. Uh, my quest pizza, uh, the the one that I I you know I I always treat myself with pizza on. I try to do Friday and Sunday evening Sunday because it's supposed to be meal prep day. But meal prep day is just kind of you know kind of a name in name only now because uh, I seem to meal prep whenever whenever I need to, but. Uh, understanding that today is Sunday and uh, I enjoy a, a Quest frozen pizza uh, that fits in, fits quite nicely into my macros. It's a little bit higher in the calorie t- uh, content than what I would really like, but it def- with the, the protein and the carbs and the fat might put me over a little bit, but for the caloric content, it's pretty good. Uh, I get to eat one of those, so I've been looking forward to that all day. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this Dad Bod Strong podcast or this episode of the Dad Bod Strong podcast. If you could, please find me on iTunes. Rate me on iTunes. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. Uh, tell anybody that wants to listen to a fat guy struggle about trying to lose weight. Uh, you can listen to this podcast because I think that we can all relate. And I think that if we, we all have stories to tell. And uh, if we can tell those stories and we can, we can touch just one other person, I think that that's definitely going to help. And that's my goal because I, may, I, don't, I definitely don't have all the answers. However, I'm going to tell everybody that I meet in public that I got all the answers now. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm just here to try to relate to you and talk to you about my life and my life and my struggles because I think that I have enough struggles in my life that a lot of you could relate to. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off of this episode of the Dad Bod Strong Podcast.